You can see where the hide is folded on the left and right to form the valve through which the air enters the bellows. Strips of rubber inner tube are used to bind the hides in place. Jacques Soba helps Razinga make adjustments. <laughs> he announces the furnace is ready to begin smelting the next day. The climactic step in the process is the actual smelting. A senior elder pours alternating layers of charcoal and a mix of ore and flux into the top of the furnace. The furnace is lit, and the young men of the village take turns pumping the bellows as hard as they can for hours on end. There is a great deal that can go wrong at this point after days of preparation. The fire may not reach a temperature high enough to melt the ore, or the furnace may crack, or worse collapse, spreading sparks and incandescent slag and ore all over the area. Large numbers of people have gathered from local communities and from the capital, Ouagadougou, which is about 150 miles away. This is an important event. Burkinabis are curious about their cultural history, and faculty and students from the University of Ouagadougou attend to see this reenactment of an important technology. <laughs> These are bowls of zumkom, or millet water with sugar, that the young men will drink as they work at the bellows. An elder offers some as sacrifices to the spirits by splashing it on the furnace. <laughs> A Mosi flautist plays a praise song associated with smithing. You hear the more word Bwaga repeatedly. This is the word for iron furnace. One of the few senior elders who still has the strength takes a turn at the bellows. Late in the afternoon, after 10 hours of pumping, a solid lump or bloom of iron has formed at the bottom of the furnace, where the heat is almost white hot. The end is in sight. The front of the furnace is broken off to reveal the large bloom of iron, weighing almost 30 pounds, nestled among the glowing charcoal.
<laughs> the mass of new iron is dull gray on the outside and incandescent red on the inside. It is rough because it has never completely liquefied, but in the heat of the furnace it has fallen to the bottom of the furnace through the charcoal and slag where it has formed a large single mass. It is again heated to yellow hot. The bellows are similar but smaller than the large bellows used in smelting. The surround for the forge is an old steel rim from a large truck. la forge, on a hâte de fabriquer une daba après euh, l'extraction du fer. This is the forge where they will make a hoe following the smelting of the iron. Voilà. Two senior smiths pull the hot iron from the fire and begin to shape it on the anvil. Their round hammers are very old-fashioned and traditional. Contemporary smiths more often use hammers made in China. This is called pumping iron. <laughs> Gracias.